Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the week before Thanksgiving and Julian are out cross-country skiing in Teton National Park. There isn't a lot of snow but there's ample snow coverage for roads and trails. Uh, it's great to get out and not have to worry about hitting rocks or sticks. The video I posted this week on my quiver for this season sure got a lot of attention and I think that's great. I just love the fact that there's quite a bit of interest in this lightweight cross-country off-trail skiing um, especially these days when there's so much focus on AT skiing skiing the big steep runs and everything you see on YouTube you know for the young at heart and the highly skilled but there's room for recreational skiing and this is the kind of skiing that I enjoy just as much as taking on some adrenaline rush with my downhill setup. Now Julie is out in front today she's breaking a trail and I'm having a hard time keeping up with her and talking at the same time but I thought I'd take this opportunity just to address a couple of questions that were raised about my quiver and I think the big one is why in the world did I give up three pin leather boots and move to the Explorer system if you've been watching my channel it'd probably be a good idea to go back last year maybe all the way back to April and May and uh, take a look at the videos that I did when I first got that wonderful pair of Discovery 80s and the Alpina Alaska boots they sent, were sent to me by Alpina to do some testing and the only thing they asked in return is that I post a review they uh, said they didn't need to pre-approve it it didn't have to be a positive review, although of course they were hoping for a positive review but they were just so excited about the new system and they knew it had very few people have had the opportunity to ski it and I felt really privileged to be able to get out there and try them so I went up on Togedy Pass in early May, found some decent snow and did a really good comparison of how the binding felt in the kick and glide mode and I was skiing a set of Alpha Scarvat triple NBCs on Traverse 78s I was skiing a set of three pin leathers the Alpha Greenland boots on a set of S-bound 98s and then I also had the the brand new Alpine Alaska with the Discovery 80 and the Explorer system that video was definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it and then summer came and before I knew it falls around and it was time to get out and do some more testing with this new gear so I continued to ski the Alaskas and the Discoveries but I also picked up a brand new pair of S-Bound 98s one of the new extra light versions Fisher had shaved a few grams off the weight and my other 98s had had a lot of miles in them skied with them for many years and uh, over time all skis they start to lose a little bit of their camber they lose a little bit of their liveliness and I thought well this is a perfect opportunity I'll get their new pair of 98s I'll mount them up with the Explorer binding and then the boot that I was most interested in was the Alpha Free boot I've got two or three videos that are where I review that boot and I skied it on both my 98s and I liked the way it felt so well that I went ahead and decided to mount it up on my Volley Objective skis which I've been skiing mostly in leathers and three pins for the past several years and that turned out to be 
a really good combination. So I had the Discovery 80s, I had the S-Bound 98s, and I had the Volley Objectives, all with the new Explorer binding. And I had two pairs of Explorer boots. I had the Freeze, and I had the Alpino Alaska boots. I really like the Alpino Alaska boots. They're, they're a good kick and glide boot. They don't have quite the support that the Alpha Freeze do. I would classify the Alpine Alaska as a good all-round off-trail boot. And the Alpha Freeze as a, a good downhill boot. Uh, you know, the Freeze, they don't go up in the class of stiffness like a plastic boot, but they're certainly more supportive than any of the softer boots that I've skied in the last couple of years. And I would have been I think pretty happy with that setup. My only problem is is that I have kind of an unusual foot and it doesn't always work in every boot. And if you paid attention to my channel for the last few years, you've noticed I've had to go through quite a few boots struggling with blisters and other foot issues. The uh, Alpine Alaska, as good as a boot as it was, just was not working for me. And the main reason is that my foot is pretty wide at the front, around the toes, and the Alpine Alaska you know, has a, does not have a wide toe box area. And so I was having some foot problems and I sort of suffered through it. Last year I, I ordered a a different set of Alpinas from REI and a different size. I thought it might, might help. It did not help. This fall I had given those boots away and I needed to find another solution. And I had skied the Alpha Scarvat and Alpha Greenland boots. And once I got through the break-in process, I was pretty happy with those boots. And a couple of years ago, I uh, spent a winter skied many outings with Stephen. If you follow Telmark Talk Forum, he's pretty active over there. He was skiing primarily the Alpha Guard. And that's a triple NBC boot. And this year Alpha is selling kind of a variant of that very same boot. And it's called the Alpha Vista. The upper looks pretty much to be the same as the Alpha Guard. The main difference being the sole is the Explorer binding instead of the uh, Triple NBC. So I thought, well, I'm having problems with the Alpine Alaskas. I'm going to go ahead and bite the bullet and get a pair of these and try them out and see if they'll take the place of my 75 millimeter green lens and my triple NBC Scarvettes. And uh, I ended up with the Alpha Free for when I'm skiing my objectives and the primary focus is downhill. I need that extra control. And then I plan on skiing this Alpha Guard for all other tours. And that's the boot that I'm skiing today is the Alpha Guard. This is my fourth outing on them. I've been starting off real easy with them. I haven't had the opportunity to ski down any hills with these boots yet. But so far the kick and glide feels really good. And uh, I think one of the most impressive things so far is I just love where the bend of the toe is. It's uh, far enough back on the boot that it doesn't seem like I'm going to get any toe pinch when I'm in the tail mark position. Anyway, I'm rambling on back to the story of why I switched. I think that the Rotofel Explorer is pretty much the future for lightweight cross-country off-trail skiing. That doesn't mean that it's light years ahead 
of the other systems, you know, the triple NBC or the old traditional 310. But they're just some little nuances that I think are are noteworthy and uh, some things that are very helpful. One thing I can say for sure is that the kick and glide feel on it is as good as a triple NBC. And I think the downhill control, as long as you've got a supportive boot, certainly is as good as the 75 millimeter. And I think if you're using the new Alpha Free boot or some future boot that may have good stiff support, I think you're going to find for most people that it offers a little better control than certainly soft leather boots. So how's the trail breaking, Julie? Probably your turn, don't you? Think? My turn? <laughs> I've been just telling everybody on YouTube what a I've been slacking it off, but they can hear me panning, so they know who's the animal in this family. Anyway, when I, I get back home, I'll pull out a set of Triple NBC boots, and I'll pull out the, the two Explorer boots that I have, and we'll put the skis on the bench and clamp them down, and we'll talk a little bit more about what I think are some of the advantages Well, I think that's about enough shuffle ski talk for today. So stay tuned for part two. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and this week especially, thankful for our blessings.